This is David Vinegar, consultant obstetrician and gynaecologist in London and author of twowomenshealth.com. Welcome to this video. We shall be discussing the combined oral contraceptive pill with particular reference to a paper that appeared in the British Medical Journal in March 2010. The combined oral contraceptive pill has several benefits. Primarily, it is one of the most effective contraceptive methods available. There are other benefits. Periods tend to be less painful and less heavy. Some women are troubled by significant pain around the time of ovulation, that's called Mittelschmerz, and this will respond to the combined pill. Many women with premenstrual tension receive benefit from this combination of oestrogen and progesterone. Women with irregular menstrual cycles have their cycles regulated by the monthly combined oral contraceptive pill. There are other benefits. Women troubled by acne often have improvements in their dermatological condition. Some women without periods, amenorrhea, have low oestrogen and this may have damaging effects on the bone and probably the heart. The pill will correct that deficiency. Some women have excess body hair, hirsutism, and this will usually respond to the pill. Hirsutism should be investigated before it is treated. Some women have recurrent small cysts in their ovaries. We call these functional cysts. They tend to occur during the cycle and then disappear, and occasionally it may cause pain. This will respond to the pill. Some women are troubled by endometriosis, and the pill may prove beneficial. There is evidence of reduced incidence of cancer of the ovary and cancer of the endometrium, the lining of the womb. No medication with proven benefits is without some degree of risk and side effects. Of course, the greatest concern would be mortality, deaths associated with the use of the pill. In March 2010, there has been a long study undertaken by the Royal College of General Practitioners in the UK looking at mortality among contraceptive pill users. Their objective has been to compare the risk of mortality for those women who have ever used the combined oral contraceptive pill and those who are never users. The study was prospective and began in 1968. The data was obtained from general practitioner and NHS registries. The study included 1400 general practices throughout the UK. The study included 46,000 plus women who were observed for up to 39 years. There were more than 378,000 women years of observation for the never users and 819,000 amongst the ever users. There were more than twice as many women years in the ever users compared to the never users. There were 1,700 plus deaths in the never users and 2,800 plus deaths in the ever users. But we must remember that there were more than twice as many ever users compared to never users in the study. This means that the ever users had a significantly lower rate of death from any cause compared to the ever users. There were relatively fewer deaths 
in the ever users from all forms of cancer, including the bowel, uterus and ovarian cancer. There were fewer circulatory diseases, including ischemic heart disease and all other forms of deaths. The estimated absolute reduction in all-cause mortality among ever users of oral contraception was 52 per 100,000 women years. The conclusion is most reassuring. Oral contraception was not associated with an increased long-term risk of death in this very large UK cohort. Indeed, there was a net benefit. This is David Vinegar of twowomenshealth.com. Thank you for watching this video.